Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown, the unofficial Sumo podcast for official Sumo fans. This is Ryan. This is Jake. And this is our hot, not hot to Haru Bonds K prediction off to a roaring start here. Uh, and as uh, people watching on YouTube might be able to see two things. Of course, we have, as usual, uh, the results for the Hatsu Basho. And as we go through the episode, Jake will be unveiling uh, my Haru prediction for where I think all the Rikshi are going to line up after the Hatsu Basho. Uh, but also, I've got a new camera set up, so everything is not quite as zoomed in right on my face as it used to. I've got some uh, new things behind me. I've got a nice... Nope, wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> got a nice uh, Grand Sumo Breakdown banner right behind me. Uh, Courtesy here. of uh, Dallas Sumo Club, by the way. Uh, they made that banner for a recent event, and then when they were done with it, sent it our way. It's awesome. awesome. Thank you very much, Della Sumo Club. And then right here we have, you can't see it, but this is my framed autographed Koto Nawaka card that I have. If I duck down a little bit over here is six framed trading cards, which I'll be rotating every uh, Basho after a winner. So I have the six most recent winners there. And then over here is the Bonske, uh from the Basho that we attended live back in July of 2019. So I got a fresh little setup. A, a, as well as the rest of the mess uh, of the office that yeah. <laughs> recorded that you can see. Uh, but so the, the wide yeah. angle, not not only does the wide angle let us look at less Ryan, which is great, yeah. but also more of Ryan's mess. Yes, it's yeah. it's beautiful. But it, most it, it's more authentic. You get the entire cat bed back here with a sleeping Renly right inside. So we, <laughs> we got go. we got Renly cam the entire time. What's uh what's that what's that gold thing right next to him? Uh I can't quite make out what that is. That, my friend, is my trophy for being the best Bods K guy, which is as true today as the day it was sent to me. I am number one on Guess the Bods K overall, and hoping with this prediction to keep that going for a third consecutive boss show. Real quick before we get into it, what do you think your odds are for staying on top? Um I like it this one. I feel I feel pretty decent on this one. This is one it's a little bit more chaotic and I feel like mm. I thrive more in sparsing out the chaos than trying to line up um when things are kind of more well this is how it's how it should go. Sure. Um so I I I I feel good about these bonds case typically. So we'll see if that keeps going forward, and we'll start at the top, as we usually do. Uh, pretty sure there's never been a case where the Yokozuna has been demoted following a Yusho, so I'm going to keep Terra Fuji as our top Rikshi on this Bodske, and obviously Kirishima did not do enough to raise to the rank of Yokozuna in the follow or it for this Basho, so he will remain at Ozeki, and he will remain the top Ozeki, as our top three Ozeki, will stay in the same order they were in the previous Basho. They were previously ordered Kirishima, Hoshoryu, Takakesho, and that is the order of most wins to least wins that those three Rikshi had, so there's no need to reshuffle those three. But there is a slight change as Takakesho. He will remain the third Ozeki, but he will shift over from Ozeki to west to Ozeki to east this Basho. And he will do that in order to make room for our newly promoted fourth Ozeki, Koto no Waka. And yes, it is still Koto no Waka. We made a big deal on the Hatsu recap that, hey, now that he's promoted to Ozeki, he's going to be taking on the Shikona of Koto Zakura. He will be, but not quite yet. It sounds like he is keeping the Kotonowaka Shikona, his father's Shikona, for one Basho only at the Ozeki rank so that his father's Shikona can be associated with the rank of Ozeki, which just makes me like Kotonowaka even more. Yeah, that's uh, it's almost like pandering. Uh, like, come on, man, you can't be that good of a dude, right? <laughs> come on. Apparently he can. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to blindly believe that he is a paragon of sumo virtues and human virtues, and he's just the best that there is to offer. Until some some goofy scandal comes out about him. No reason to think otherwise. Yeah, yeah, I, 
You've always got to have that worry in the back of their head that there's some scandal that's going to be brought to light someday. Turns about out, any of these yeah, like turns out he's a fan of American football, which is cool. But then it comes out he's a Bears fan, and then it's oh. suddenly like just the worst kind of person, or even worse, a Packers fan. <laughs> yeah, Ugh. I didn't even want to go there, but yeah, <laughs> it, it's hard to think about your heroes in that light. I understand. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and as per the norm, the newly promoted Ozeki uh, should end up as the lowest ranked Ozeki on the next Bonske, uh, despite Kotonawaka having more wins than any other Ozeki on the previous Bonske, the newly promoted Ozeki is always the lowest ranked. Moving down to Sekiwake, where this rank should be fairly straightforward and simple for this Basha. We have one opening due to the promotion of Koto Nowaka. Uh, so Daesha with a 9-6 and six record should shift over from Sekiwake West to the Sekiwake East rank that was deserted by Koto Nowaka. And based on our rank and record combinations, there's only one other Rikshi that deserves to be in the Sanyaku ranks. Uh, and that Rikshi is going to fill the Sekiwa Sekiwake West slot, and that is Wakamoto Haru. So following his one Basho absence from the Sekiwake ranks after his 10-5 and five record, his Kinboshi, his outstanding performance prize, he will be back up at the Sekiwake ranks alongside Dae Show. Just... Did I hear you right that he's the only other one? You didn't say he's the only other one that deserves to be Sekiwake. You said he's the only other one that deserves to be Sanyaku? You heard correctly and I spoke correctly. <laughs> Oof. Like I said, <laughs> a little, little bit of chaos at the, the okay, top okay. of the Bodske here. And we're we're going to get there with the Komusubi rank uh, where it seemingly Koto Nawaka has put a curse on the Komusubi rank. In Nagoya of last year, it was the last time that Koto Nawaka was ranked Komusubi. And he had an 11-4 record and forced open a new Sekiwake slot. In that same Basho, Abi was was his fellow Komusubi, and Abi had a 6-9 and nine record and was demoted following that Basho. And in the three uh, Basho since, we have had six different Komusubi, and none of them has gotten a winning record since Koto Nawaka's 11-4 wow. and four back in July. <laughs> That's awesome. So we've got to fill in the Komusubi ranks and see who's up for a bad time this Basho. And Looks like Abi is going to be signing up for another bad time at Komosubi, which is all he's been having at Komosubi over the past couple of years. He's a shoe in uh, for the Komosubi East rank. His rank record combination would put him at Maiga Shira 1. But as I met mentioned discussing Wakamoto Haru, no one else deserves to be Sanyaku, and he's the next guy that deserves to be ranked. So he's going to end up at our Komosubi East side and the next Rikshi that deserves to be ranked doesn't deserve to be ranked until we hit Maigashira three. So we're really going to be struggling uh, to pull up somebody to the Komosubi West spot, uh, which is a little less clear than Abi. So the Rikshi that deserves to be Maigashira three, unfortunately for us is Komosubi Ura, who went six and nine from the Komosubi West rank oh. that we are trying to fill. So but he can't stay there if he got a he, losing record. Yeah. Okay. He's not going to stay there with a six and nine record. So that means we have to look at a group of Rikshi that deserve to be ranked by Gashira four to fill the final Sanyaku Ugh. slot. Uh, one of the Rikshi that deserves to be Maigashira 4 is Atami Fuji, who went 6-9 and nine for Maigashira 1, so we're not going to promote him up to Komosubi. So that leaves us with Nishikigi, who went 8-7 and seven from Maigashira 5, and Asanoyama, who went 9-6 and six from Maigashira 7. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> not good. Uh, so neither of these Rikshi were in the joy, so no joy bias. Standard tie-breaking rules should apply here. Uh, both of them were on the west side, so we're not going to be able to choose one uh, to go because he was on the east side, the other was on the west, so we got to go based solely on who had more wins, and Asanoyama, as I mentioned, had nine compared to Nishikigi's eight, uh, so in that case, I've got Asanoyama jumping all the way up from Maigashira 7 to the Komusubi West rank, a promotion, uh, an over promotion of four ranks following his nine and six record. Jeez. There, there that would is... be. It, Go ahead. I, I, I was just going to say that would be uh, 
like like if if it was somebody making their Sanyaku debut or something like that, that that would just feel like the softest, like just just uh, most undeserved ever. But like we all kind I mean, of figure it's... Asano Yama would be up here in it in a minute, regardless. But we, I mean, we've been figuring that for about six months at this point. True, I feel like, but he just hasn't been able to stay healthy. But I think luck right. will be on his side. Another reason. So there, there is a small part of me that's thinking, well, Nishikigi fought the Yokozuna this Basho. Maybe that counts for something. Maybe that's a little edge in his favor. Uh, but that part of me is stupid, and so I'm not going to listen to it. <laughs> One of the things I'm trying to do this Botsuke, get out of my head too much. Um. But I'm also wondering if maybe Asanoyama does get a little bit of preference uh, because he is a former Ozeki. And when we saw Nishikigi at Komosubi, he went 5-10 and 10 and immediately bombed out. Uh, so maybe if there is a virtual tie between these two, maybe the extra nudge goes to Asanoyama, somebody who we believe uh, can stand up a little bit better at that rank than a Nishikigi could. Uh, but now, now we have to go to the zone of death uh which extends down to Mega Shira 4 east this basho so Mega Shira 4 east and up will be our top 16 rikshi those who we expect to fight the yokozuna and of course the yokozuna himself uh so that is seven spots that we need to fill with only three rikshi available that deserve to be at those ranks so obviously Yikes. we're going to we're going to keep keep clawing and scratching to bring people up to this part of the bonds K. Uh, so look out for some very generous over promotions like we saw with Austin Oyama and very generous under demotions like we're going to see, I believe with uh, dropping Komosubi Ura. I have him taking the Maigashira one East rank. So, Despite Nishikigi losing the tiebreaker to Asanoyama for that final Komosubi spot, I don't have him going next since we're now below the rank that Ura was was at, and so he is now eligible to be placed on the Bonske. And as I mentioned, he deserves to be my Gashira 3. Nishikigi deserved to be my Gashira 4. Uh, so even though Ura went 6-9 and nine from Komosubi and would only really be dropping a half rank from Komosubi West to Maigashira 1 East. He's the next highest Rikshi that deserves to be ranked, and I'm not going to put a mid Maigashira Rikshi that deserves to be ranked lower than him ahead of him in the rankings yeah. just to arbitrarily give Ura a larger demotion. I, I don't like it, but I get it. <laughs> yeah. Plus, I mean, we've seen these half rank demotions for six and nine Rikshi in the past when the yeah. situation called for it. In Haru of last year, Koto Shoho went six and nine for Maigashira five east, and then all he did was slide over to Maigashira five west. Yeah. Like I said, I don't like it, but I get it. There's going to be a lot of that coming up. I, so the I <laughs> expect there to be, yes. <laughs> the next two Rikshi that deserve to be ranked are Atami Fuji and the aforementioned Nishkigi, but similar to when we filled the Komosubi West rank, Atami Fuji is ineligible because he went six and nine from the rank that we are trying to fill. Uh, so Nishkigi is the shoe-in at this point, and he should be getting a three-rank over-promotion after his eight and seven record from Maigashira 5, uh, back on the cusp of Sanyakudam for Nishkigi, or if he gets lucky, he might end up at Komosubi and we'll have Asanoyama here instead. I would be very surprised. I don't know. I'm I'm like 70-30 on Asanoyama, but it wouldn't mm. be like a massive upset to me. They are in a virtual lock and Nishkigi was previously ranked higher. Um I, I think, yeah, maybe it's just you you mentioned like some sort of like legacy bias for like he's in a former Ozeki, but like I I don't think that would come into play in like the actual calculations of the bonds K, but like I can't help, but have some of that in my head, no matter what. Yeah. I think that's probably what I'm struggling with. I mean, that's fair. Uh, so now my Gashira two East, we are past Atami Fuji's original rank and he becomes eligible to be put on the bonds K and I will immediately do so. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> he deserves to be ranked my Gashira four. And the next Rikshi that deserves to be ranked is Toby Zaru, who went seven and eight from my Gashira four. So 
I'm not going to be giving oh. him a two rank promotion following a losing record. And then if we wanted to try to give a Tommy Fuji more than a half rank demotion for Maegashira one West to Maegashira two East, then we would need to start looking at Richie that deserved to be ranked uh, Maegashira six, which are Maysay who went nine and six for Maegashira nine and Oho who went 10 and five for Maegashira 11 to fill our Maegashira two spot. Jesus. I don't think either one of those guys is going to be jumping over a Tommy Fuji here. So I've got a Tommy Fuji landing at my Gashira to East. Oh, and, <laughs> sorry. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to be doing that a lot. It's just, it's just a rough one. I promise it gets better. Okay. We're not there yet, but it does get better. <laughs> okay. I trust you. Um, But in my notes, I wrote, now we're at my Gashira to West and things really get dire. <laughs> so... <laughs> At this point, we're either there, looking. There's some very, very upset emojis in the in this outline here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, we're looking at over promoting by four ranks, either Mese or Oho, uh, and our only other options are Takayasu who we would drop two ranks from Komosubi after a 2-13 and 13 record, or no. Midori Fuji, who we would slide over a half rank from Maegashira 2 East to Maegashira 2 West after a 5-10 and 10 record. No. I'm not going to do that with either no. of them. Plus, both of them deserve to be ranked behind Oho and Meisei. So it wouldn't make sense to do that either. I'm just saying those are the only other two eligible uh, for this rank. I gotcha. Okay. Uh, so... Oho and Mese are both going to get pretty lucky, but who is going to end up just a little bit luckier? Uh, we've got to look at just our standard tiebreakers. We had a Maegashira 9 and a Maegashira 11. Clearly no joy bias involved there. Uh, so when we're looking at two people of those rank, east-west side, both of them were previously on the west side, uh, so nothing to be found there. So we go to who had more wins. In this case, it was Oho. So I have Oho jumping up nine ranks from my Gashira 11 following a 10 and five record to my Gashira to West uh, RIP Oho in Haru. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's going to be a coveted chump pick for our, uh, for our bet. <laughs> uh, luckily it's Flaric, uh that will have the first pick at chump. And so hopefully he, Obviously, he's not going to listen to this conversation. Yeah, I was going to say, you know he's not watching this. <laughs> hopefully, he overlooks it, and it falls right to me, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All oh. right. Yeah, it, it it's rough. It's rough. Uh, at my Gashira 3 East, our best option is still going to be uh, the loser of that tiebreaker, Mese. So I've got Mese getting a three-rank over promotion uh, as he's the eligible Rikshi that is... Deserves to be ranked the highest. So a six rank jump for Mese following a nine and six record right back into the joy for him. Things now things get a little bit more trickier uh, at my Gashira you, you three West saying that. And then it got worse. It's like, uh, so, which country is that? I think that's the motto of Russian history. And then things got worse. Uh, so it's not, we're not going to be pulling people up. Uh, as far this time, it's just kind of the tiebreaker scenario that we're in that that's a little trickier here for me. Gotcha. So Toby Zaru still deserves to be the highest ranked Rikshi. He deserves to be my Gashira five. But as we mentioned, he went seven and eight for my Gashira four. We're not going to promote him. Uh, so that means we need to look at Rikshi that deserves to be ranked my Gashira seven. And there's four Rikshi that deserve that rank, but only three are eligible to be placed at this rank because one of them had a losing record for my Gashira six. Um, so uh, those three Rikshi are Midori Fuji, who went five and ten for my Gashira two, Hira Duumi, who went nine and six for my Gashira ten, or Takanosho, who went ten and five from my Gashira twelve. So basically we have two options that we can go with in my head. I could go with standard tie-breaking procedures and put Takanosho here as he would win the East-West side and then most wins debate. So Takanosho could go here. Or I could assume that Midori Fuji might get some joy bias and he will just instantly win those tiebreakers because of his previous rank, giving him only a one-ranked emotion following a 5-10 and 10 record which is not unheard of, but is extremely rare. So since we've been watching Sumo, 
In Nagoya 2021, Toby Zaru went 5-10 and 10 from Maegashira 2, just like Midori Fuji did, and he ended up landing at Maegashira 3. When it came to filling the Maegashira 3 West rank, he deserved to be Maegashira 7, but the next Rikshi that deserved to be ranked deserved to be Maegashira 9. And so the Bonske committee went with who deserved to be ranked the highest. It was Toby Zaru. He got a very lucky drop of one rank following a 5-10 yeah. and 10 record. Uh, the other situation was in Haru of 2022. So not a big gap between those. I think only like a uh, four Basho gap between these two scenarios occurring. But uh, Shima Noumi went five and 10 from Maegashira nine. This is my favorite one to ever point out the luckiest demotion in history. Uh, okay. Shima Noumi went five and 10 from Maegashira nine for Maegashira nine West and landed at Maegashira 10 East, a half rank demotion following a five and 10 record. Because when it came to filling that Maegashira 10 East rank, he deserved to be ranked Maegashira 14. And the next Rikshi that deserved to be ranked was Maegashira 15. So the Bonske committee went with the guy who deserved to be ranked the highest instead of arbitrarily over demoting him in favor of somebody else. Hmm. So at this point, we are teetering, if not fully devolving into me going too deep into the weeds on this rank. It's I listened to our last Bods K review while preparing for this episode, uh, which I typically do uh, to see if I left myself any nuggets of advice for these future Bods K <laughs> episodes. And I told and I, I gave myself a message back that I said, if I'm getting too deep in, into things, if I'm getting too lost in who should go where and what tiebreaker is going to account for here, this happened three years ago, but this happened two years ago, and then this third thing happened a year ago, uh, just stop and go with who deserves to be ranked higher. And so in this case... I, I really... Sorry, go ahead and reveal who you picked. In this case, uh, Takanosho deserves to be ranked higher based on uh, the standard tiebreaking scenarios, so I am going to have Takanosho landing at my Gashira 3 West. There you go. I was just going to say, I love that 10 minutes ago, Ryan, and two years ago, Ryan, both agreed. Get out of your head. <laughs> <laughs> you and said I'm that finally at the listening. And you, you said that at the top of the episode, and we made it down to my Gashira 3 before we start listening to old episodes of ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I always listen to- To be to fair, the... that, that's the best, according to the trophy- that's the best person to listen to for advice. So. That's true. That's very <laughs> true. Uh, but yeah, I always listen to the old episodes in case like there's like a new trend that's occurring that I forget between the time we sure. do the Bonske review and the next Bonske prediction. So I want to listen to make sure like, okay, they did this this time. They've done it for a couple of Bashos. Maybe I should start uh, factoring that into my prediction and change things up a little bit. Uh, so... Yeah, and the reason I'm okay with doing this with Midori Fuji is he doesn't stand alone as the next Rikshi that deserves to be the highest ranked. He's in a virtual deadlock with Takanosho, so I feel okay uh, putting Takanosho ahead of Midori Fuji. It's not an arbitrary bump down. It's just a little bit of a tiebreaker for Takanosho just to avoid that one rank um, under demotion for uh, Midori Fuji here. Sure. Uh, so that's why I feel okay with it uh, without diving even farther into the weeds to figure that one out. <laughs> no, so I gotcha. we get to Maegashira 4 East, and hey, Toby Zaru can finally come off the board. He went 7-8 and eight for Maegashira 4 East in the previous Basho. He deserves to be two ranks higher than any other Rikshi, so we're just going to have him staying put at Maegashira 4 East here. And then we're back to uh, Midori, not, yeah, Midori Fuji and Hira Doumi. And I think this is pretty easy at this point. Midori Fuji was on the east side. Hira Doumi was on the west side. Uh, so I have Midori Fuji dropping only two ranks from Maegashir 2 to Maegashir 4 West after his 5-10 and 10 record. Because at this point, he is the next one that clearly deserves to be ranked. And so I don't think we arbitrarily push him down any further. Makes sense. Uh, so, that being said, Hira Duumi should easily land at Maegashira 5 East. He is the next guy that deserves to be ranked. There's nobody that we've, like, unlocked with a losing record that can all of a sudden be placed here. It's still Hira Duumi, which would be a promotion of three ranks after an 8-7 and seven record for him. Uh, Getting so, back into, like, big but still realistic kind of. Just a, just a two-rank over promotion yeah. for Hira Doumi here. It's better. Uh, so the only reason Hira Doumi 
really wouldn't go here is if the Bosque committee did decide to let's all right, let's go with a little bit of joy bias here. Uh, and in that case, that would be Godoyama, who deserves to be one rank lower than Hiro de Um and but I I don't know why they would do that with Gonoyama. He's already going to get such a lenient under demotion. I don't see any reason why you would artificially put him ahead of Hira to Umi here. And based on what we've seen over the past three to four bonds case, uh, I don't think that we're going to get that sort of leniency for Gonoyama here. Uh, plus, if Hira Duumi ends up on the east side, it will be only the second time in his 10 Makuuchi Bashos that he's been on the east side. So something that should be a coin flip, 50-50, uh, 20% of the time, Hira Duumi, well, that's if he gets if on the you're east right. side. If yeah. I'm right, it would be 20% of the time he's on the east side, 80% on the west. As so, it stands, it's only 11%. Versus yeah. ninety or uh, eighty nine percent. That's yeah. ridiculous. And I, I noticed that because I just felt like doing all of these Bonske episodes. Whenever Hira to Umi is tied with somebody, I always feel I just like felt like he's always losing these tiebreakers for being on the west side. And I checked. I'm like, yeah, he's been on the west he's side. Eight on the west out side. of nine bot shows, which is just a little statistical really anomaly. Funny. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't uh, mean anything, but like no. it's still fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at Maegashira 5 West, we have to pull from Rick G that deserved to be Maegashira 8. Uh, Gonoyama, who went 5 and 10 from Maegashira 3. Tsudugisho, who went 9 and 6 from Maegashira 11. And Ono Sato, who went 11 and 4 from Maegashira 15. So we're at Maegashira 5, and we're already talking Ono Sato. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> Tsudugisho and Gonoyama were previously on the east side, while Ono Sato was on the west side. So that should immediately uh, eliminate Ono Sato from consideration here. So this leaves me with another situation similar to Midori Fuji versus Takanosho. Do I go with the Joy bias and put the Joy Rikshi higher, or do I go with the standard tie breaking rules, assume that there's going to be no Joy bias here? Uh, so, and what that would do is that make sure Gonoyama gets demoted more than two ranks following a five and 10 record. Uh, so here I'm going to just do the opposite of what I did for Midori Fuji versus Takanosho. I'm going to let Joy Bias win in this case and have Gonoyama take the Maegashira five West rank. I'm not as worried about a two rank demotion for a five and 10 Rikshi that I am for a one rank. And uh, honestly, I just need to be a little inconsistent so that I can emulate the Bonds K committee. <laughs> if I follow <laughs> one set of rules all the way through a prediction, I'm not going to get them all right because Rookie that's not move. how the Bonds K committee do. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Rookie move to have rules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, then we get to Maegashira 6 East, and I haven't mentioned Kim Bozan yet, but he was that fourth Rikshi that deserved to be ranked Maegashira 7 back when we were talking about Midori Fuji, Taka no Show, and Hira do Umi. Um, but he wasn't eligible to be placed until this rank came around since he went 7 and 8 from the same rank in the last Basho. He deserves to be ranked higher than anybody else remaining. There's nobody else that deserves to be ranked as high as him, so I have him remaining put at my Gashira six east then at my Gashira six west nobody new has become eligible to place here so that means we have to go back to sudu gisho and ono sato who deserve to be ranked my Gashira eight and sudu gisho is the best pick here as he was on the east side while ono sato was on the west side so i've got sudu gisho rising up five ranks following a nine and six record to what would be his career high ranking hopefully Maybe in the preview episode, I'll hammer home like, oh, wow, Tsudugisho all the way up to Maegashira 6. I don't expect him to do good and bait Flarek into taking Tsudugisho <laughs> nice, first nice. in the chump picks. And then that I don't think it's a bad pick, but I, I, think I don't that... think it. So it, it, if Flarek does take Oho, I very well will t might take Tsudugisho here. <laughs> I think we're going to have some good choices. There you go. That's a diplomatic way to say it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then. Starting at Maegashira 7, honestly, from here on out, things get a lot cleaner as long as I assume that there will be no joy bias for our last two dropping joy Rikshi, Hokuto Fuji and Takayasu. And if the last couple of Basho are anything to go by, 
they probably won't get a whole lot of joy bias. As we saw in the last Basho, the only joy bias that dropping Rikshi like Mese or Asano Yama got is they won the first tiebreaker when it came down to Rikshi that deserved to be the same rank as them. They didn't go ahead of anybody that deserved to be ranked higher than them. Uh, so that's how I'm going to go uh, after this one. It feels like Joy bias is kind of being reined in uh, compared to when it was Issei Kahama at the head of the Bonds K committee. Uh, so I'm going to follow that trend and predict really no joy bias except for same rank tiebreakers. Even if like Takayasu was on the west side and somebody was on the east side, I still choose Takayasu. Uh, sure. So assuming no joy bias. Ono Sato is the next clear Rikshi to place on the Bonds K. So I have him landing at Maigashira 7 West after an 11 4 record for Maigashira 15, an eight rank jump for this Rikshi looking to finish out his first complete year in sumo. <laughs> you know what? I I do like that one. Yes. But I also get it. So there yeah. <laughs> you go. Change the tone a little. That a boy. Uh then. Tamawashi and Onosho are tied for who deserves the Maigashira 7 West rank. Both of them deserve to be Maigashira 9, but they're the next best thing that we have available. Tamawashi was on the east side. Onosho was on the west side. So I have Tamawashi rising three ranks to Maigashira 7 West after an 8-7 and seven record from Maigashira 10. And as we mentioned, we're, we're slowly creeping back more into the normal range. Our first eight and seven Rikshi got a uh, three rank over promotion. And now with like Hida Duumi, Tamawashi, they're getting two rank over promotions. We're not all the way there yet, but slowly we're getting there. Things are getting more normal and they're just going to keep getting better as we roll along and clear out a little bit of log jam of Rikshi that we had at the like Maigashira nine, Maigashira 10 ranks. Uh, a lot of people deserve to go there. So we're going to start filling those in. Sure. Uh, then we get to Maigashira 8 with Tamawashi placed. That leaves just Onosho as the next guy that deserves to be ranked. So I have him landing at Maigashira 8 East uh, after a 10-5 and record from Maigashira 14. And Hokuto Fuji stands alone as the next Rikshi that deserves to be ranked. So he deserves to be ranked Maigashira 10. Everyone else deserves to be ranked Maigashira 11. Uh, so I have him dropping five ranks to Maigashira 8 West after a 4-11 and 11 record from Maigashira 3. Um, not not everyone else deserves to be ranked Maigashira 11. That would be a crazy Bonds K. Everybody else deserves to be ranked Maigashira 11 or lower. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. I figured that's what you meant. But yes, <laughs> thinking back, that was a – yeah, I get it now. Just in case there's any pedants out there. I have – I have no uh, no expectation that we have any of those among our listenership. <laughs> Beyond you, absolutely not, no. I mostly did that to cover myself from you. That's a good point. Even I yeah. didn't get on your case about it, so <laughs> that's saying something. Might have just been me trying to protect myself a little bit too much there. <laughs> I, I appreciate that I have you constantly on the defensive. I think that- uh, Oh, absolutely, that yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I've done my job well then. <laughs> Taking years of training you. <laughs> All right, then we get to Maigashira 9. So we have three Rikshi here that deserve to be ranked Maigashira 11 that are fighting for the Maigashira 9 ranks. Takeyasu, Shodai, and Koto Shoho. Based on regular tiebreaker rules, Koto Shoho would go first here due to him being on the east side and then having more wins than the other Rikshi on the east side. Uh, but... I'm going to give, like I mentioned, Takeyasu just the barest of Sanyaku slash Joy Bias and have him land at Maigashira 9 East instead, dropping nine ranks from Komosubi following his 2-13 and 13 record. Uh, so with him going there, I've got the person who I put Takeyasu in front of. Uh, that's Koto Shoho landing at Maigashira 9 West. He was previously on the east side. Shodai was on the west side. Uh, so Koto Shoho rising five ranks after a 9-6 and six record from Maigashira 14. See how, how quickly we're just rolling through these now, Jake? Yeah, just banging through them. You don't even, like, you're not even citing your yourself in your bibliography <laughs> anymore. <laughs> no, and I won't have to until the very end, which I will do again. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> uh, so at Maigashira 10, uh, Shodai is the 
next Richie that deserves to be ranked. And so I have him landing at Magashir at 10 East following his 4 and 11 Keen Boshi winning performance <laughs> from Magashir 4. Uh, and <laughs> if this happens, if Shodai falls all the way to Magashir at 10, this would be his third Basho as a double digit Magashira in 48 top division Bashos. Wow. Yeah. Some real consistency from somebody who, uh, did not uh, did not really deliver when he finally hit Oseki. No, no, he did not. But at, I think more and more we could just call this a, that a fluke. Like Shodai before that Ozeki run and after that Ozeki run is like the same guy. It's just some miracle fluke that allowed him to be overpowered for three Basho to let him yeah. get up there. Let me, let me say this though: he was an Ozeki, and this is part of a bonus episode that we have coming up. Um, some of the research that I've been doing showed I was a Ozeki like almost twice as long as Tochi Notion or Mitaki Umi was. Fair, he w- still wasn't <laughs> a good Ozeki, but he Absolutely was at least not. better than those other bottom of the barrel Ozekis, which exactly is to say for Tochi Notion. I I know. I'm just saying that like, it, it, I don't know. It's it's really uncomfortable because <laughs> yeah, those. Mitaki Yumi has multiple. Well, I guess he only has one more U show than Shodai. No, but... he's got two more. He has three oh, yeah, U he shows. He does have three. Yeah, that's right. Because he was going to be like potentially the only person ever with three U shows to not hit Ozeki, and yeah. then he just like dipped his toes in that pool just to like get crossed off the list. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Anyways, speaking of Mitake Yumi, so now we have to look at Rikshi that deserves to be my Gashira twelve, of which there are two. Mitaki Yumi and Ichi Yamamoto. Both were on the east side of the Bodzke. Uh, and so I've got Mitaki Yumi dropping one rank from Magashira 9 after a 6 and 9 record, landing at Magashira 10 West because Ichi Yamamoto had only five wins. Mitaki Yumi wins the tiebreaker based on more wins. And so if Mitaki Yumi falls down to Magashira 10, which I don't see any way he won't. Uh, as he was at Magashira 9 with a 6 and 9 record, he better fall to Magashira 10. This would be his fourth Basho as a double digit Magashira in his oh. 53 Basho in the top division. Wow. So, yeah, these two are kind of going to be linked in my head for the rest of their careers, both disappointing Ozeki that dropped one Basho after the other. Uh, and now here they are at Magashira 10 a year or so later from their failed Ozeki careers just nuts yeah this was uh when we were first starting the show um I think it was Tachi I kind of dubbed this generation the tadpoles yeah um, like Takake so show Odo show yeah. Mitake Yumi I can't remember if Asano Yama was part of that but like yeah Asano Yama was a little later he was a little later yeah but yeah it's it's a bummer seeing like we've kind of seen the whole peak of these guys as part of our show uh, and, uh, yeah, cause I don't see either one of these guys returning to form. Um, yeah. but yeah, it, I think, I think spelling out exactly how many bonds case they have been near the top or certainly nearer than this mm-hmm. really goes to show their, their overall career strength versus how they're feeling right now. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, my Gashira 11. So. With us placing Mitaki Yumi, that means Ichi Yamamoto is alone as the next guy that deserves to be uh, placed on the Bonsuke. So I have him landing at Maigashira 11 East, dropping four ranks after his 5-10 and 10 record from Maigashira 7. And then we get to Maigashira 11 West, and we have to look at a couple of Rikshi that deserve to be Maigashira 13. Those are Shona no Umi and Sada no Umi. Both of these were previously on the west side, so no tiebreaker there. And Sada Naumi had more wins with his six compared to Shona Naumi's four. So I have Sada Naumi landing here, dropping just one rank after his six and nine record from Maigashira 10. And then at Maigashira 12 on the east side, Shona Naumi lost that tiebreaker. So I have him as the next Rikshi, dropping six ranks from Maigashira 6, following a four and 11 record to land at Maigashira 12 East. So for Maigashira 12 West, we are now left with four Rikshi that all deserve to be Maigashira 14 fighting for this spot. They are Ryuden, Churana Umi, Shimazu Umi, and Juryo Rikshi Nishikifuji. So 
Nishiki Fuji is coming up from Jurio and is immediately disqualified from the conversation due to anti-Jurio bias and the fact that we still haven't placed all top division Rikshi that had a winning record. Uh, so the other three Rikshi were all on the east side, so that means we have to figure out which one had the most wins, and the one that had more wins of this group is Shimazu Umi. So I'm putting him at Maegashira 12 West, following his 9-6 and six record from Maegashira 17, so a five-rank promotion for him. And Shimazu Umi, as it happens, was our last top division Rikshi with a winning record. So Juryo Rikshi are now unlocked and are able to be placed on the Bonds K whenever I feel like it. Which 13 is still pretty high uh, compared to where most Jurio guys land, though. You're GD you right it is, so I'm not putting them here yet. There you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Finishing each other's sentences there. Yep. Yeah, he's still he's still tied for who deserves to be the next ranked, and if you're in oh, Jurio and you're tied yeah. with a Maka Uchi Rikshi, that's as good as deserve it to be five ranks below them in my mind. So there's no yeah. way Nishiki Fuji <laughs> hops over these other two guys. Uh, so that means that the two spots of Maegashir 13 should go to Ryuden or, and Chura no Umi. The one with more wins should end up on the East side. And the one with fewer wins should be on the West side. Uh, but there is a caveat to that. However, as Chura no Umi had more wins than Ryuden, he had seven wins to Ryuden's three. Uh, but, Chiran Umi had his seven wins from the rank that we are trying to fill. There is a chance that Chiran Umi uh. could keep this rank, but I think they will give him at least a half rank demotion since there is somebody equally deserving of that rank in Ryuden. Uh, so I've got Ryuden taking the Maegashira 13 East rank, dropping eight ranks following his three and 12 record uh, from Maegashira five. Yeah. Uh, so, this just means the Ryuden's going to get 10 or 11 wins in the next Basho, get up to Maegashira 5, Maegashira 6, then get two or three so wins. It it, so is the cycle of Ryuden since his return to the top division from his suspension. And that means I've got Chiron Umi sliding over from Maegashira 13 East to Maegashira 13 West after his 7 and 8 record. Yeah, so you you mentioned you could have left Chiron Umi with his 7 and 8 Um but in order to give a seven and eight guy a hold, would you say you normally need at least a rank or so more gap? As a, you you mentioned, these guys were tied. So. I might even have done it if there was if Chiron Umi was previously on the east side and Ryuden was on the west side. I okay. might have given it to Chiron Umi there, but since they're both on the east side, just to give him any sort of demotion, um, I think. It, it makes sense to put Ryuda in there instead of gotcha. holding Chiron Umi. Like I said, wouldn't be surprised if Chiron Umi does stay there. Um, wouldn't shock me in the slightest. Yeah, but like that Ryuda, that's a that's a decent, that's almost exactly where you'd demote him to regardless, no matter what. So you might as well. Yeah, I think. Might as well demote the, a guy for losing record. By the numbers, not. Ryuda would have ended up at Maegashira 14. So yeah, he he's he's almost getting that full punishment for a three and twelve record anyway. Right. So yeah. Okay. And no, that makes sense. Possible like Maegashira five versus Maegashira, what was yeah, Tronobi, Maegashira thirteen, maybe some like schedule bias in there. Like, well, Ryuda fought a harder schedule, so we'll give him a little bit more bias there. Possible. Sure. Don't know, but maybe. We'll drop down to Maegashira 14. And so all of the Rikshi that deserve to be Maegashira 14 through the Maegashira 16 ranks are previous Jurio Rikshi that would be coming up to the top division. There isn't another Makauchi Rikshi that deserves to be ranked until we get down to the Maegashira 17 rank. Uh, so that actually makes it very easy to place our next few Rikshi. And Nishiki Fuji being the one we uh, talked about first, he's the one that deserves to be ranked highest. I have him landing at Maegashira 14 East, rising five ranks following his 10-5 and five record from Jurio 2. And so, with putting Nishiki Gi at Maegashira 14, this is the first Rikshi uh, outside of the Sanyaku ranks that is going at the rank he deserves to be on this bods K and oh, he geez. will be one of two that I am predicting to do that. Oh my God. I, yeah. <laughs> Everybody has been over or under uh, promoted or demoted up to this point. Everybody's been over promoted or under demoted. 
Is that since Wakamoto Haru? Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Where well, you could count Wakamoto Haru as an under promotion since he was, had 10 wins at Maigashir one. He's not going up five ranks, but obviously there's a ceiling there. So yeah, yeah he deserves to be Sekiwake, and he is. Yes. So yeah. Okay. So everybody from Abi to Chida no Umi all got <laughs> over promoted or under demoted. Wow. Huh. Uh, cool. <laughs> Then the next Rikshi that deserves to be placed is Kita Nowaka, who deserves to be Maigashira 15. Uh, and he is still two ranks clear of the next Makauchi Rikshi that deserves to be placed. So I've got no issue putting him at Maigashira 14 West, rising six ranks after his 10 and 5 record from Juryo 3. So we're immediately back to the over promotions. Yep. It, it was a nice vacation while we stopped at Nishiki Fuji. Yeah. So the next Rikshi that deserves to be placed is Takedu Fuji, who went 13-2 and two from Jurio 10. But I'm not going to be putting him on my board yet. A uh, couple of reasons. Mio Giryu, uh is our Rikshi, our Makauchi Rikshi that deserves to be ranked by Gashira 17. He only deserves to be one rank less than Takedu Fuji. And based on how Ochi slash Haku Oho was treated when he was promoted to Makauchi uh, from Deep Jurio, I don't think Takedu Fuji is going to be placed quite yet. Uh, so that means I'm going to be putting Mio Giryu at Magashira 15 East following a 10 and or a 5 and 10 record from Magashira 12. So there were two other Rikshi that deserved the Magashira 17 rank alongside of Mio Giryu, uh, but they were Jurio Rikshi, so I didn't uh, really consider them uh, instead of Takeru Fuji at the Magashira 15 East rank because I figure Mio Giryu is winning that tiebreaker over those two. Uh, but those two Rikshi are Dayamami and Roga. Uh, once again, based on how Haku Oho was promoted when he first came up to the top division, I'm going to put both of these Rikshi ahead of Takedu Fuji, who deserves to be one rank higher than them. So if we go back into Natsu Basho of last year, the then Ochi went 14-1 and from Jurio 8 and deserved to be ranked Maigashira 12. Jurio 3 Rikshi Bushozan went 10 and 5 and deserved to be ranked Maigashira 15. Ochi ended up behind Bushozan, who is in that mythical Jurio joy that I'm still trying to decide if it exists or not. Uh, despite deserving to be, despite Ochi deserving to be three ranks higher than him. Ochi also ended up behind top division Rikshi, Duyuden, and Takuda Fuji that he deserved to be three ranks ahead of, Koto Shoho, who he deserved to be four ranks ahead of, and Endo and Aoyama, who he deserved to be ranked five ranks ahead of. Wow. Also in, in that same Basho, Atami Fuji went 13-2 and two from Jurio 8 in that Basho. He deserved to be three ranks ahead of Endo and Aoyama, but he was kept in Jurio in favor of those two Rikshi. Uh, there's more reasons than just screw Jurio guys that that happened, I think, uh, but mostly screw Jurio guys. But mostly that, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So both Jurio 1 Dayamami and Jurio 3 Roga are in this elusive Jurio joy that I'm trying to make sure exists. Uh, so because of that and how Bu Shozan was elevated ahead of Haku Oho uh, in the Nagoya Basho of last year, I am going to be a little unnecessarily mean to Takeru Fuji in my prediction um, and like I said, I'm not going to put him ahead of Roga and Dayamami. Uh, so for the Maigashir 15 West, it's going to be one of those two that I'm placing here. Both of them were on the east side, but Roga had nine wins compared to Dayamami's eight. So I'm going to have Roga rise five ranks after his nine and six record from Jurio three to land at Maigashir 15 West. And that leaves Dayamami to rise two ranks following his 8-7 and seven record from Jurya 1 to land at Maigashira 16 East. So now we are left with Takeru Fuji, who deserves to be Maigashira 16, or we have Endo, who deserves to be Jurya 1, only uh, two ranks less than Takeru Fuji. Um there are two other Rikshi that deserve to be ranked Jurio 1, but they were both Jurio Rikshi, so I think Endo would be taking taken over either one of them. And also, I think it's harder... Well, 
Looks like we'll have a little editing to do. I forgot to change the power cord <laughs> from my work computer to my personal computer. That'll do her. Yep. All right, so seamless yeah. edit. Doodly 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 doodly. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so let that be a lesson to everybody. Uh, don't forget to plug your computer in when you are recording a podcast. Otherwise, it will die in the middle of a monologue somewhere. Um, <laughs> you did look down at your computer right before it died, so it looked like you weren't, at the very least, you probably weren't talking to yourself for a while, right? I don't think so. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> What's the last thing you remember? Honestly, I was out of here. I was I was way out of here. I was miles away. I, I, no, we, I, I, <laughs> um, we were we had just revealed Diamami, and you were talking about your um uh, your reasoning for your Magashira sixteen West decision. Takeru Fuji versus Endo. Yeah, yeah. So I think I was saying uh, Endo deserves to be the same rank as a couple of Jurio Rikshi, but Endo would win the tiebreaker, and also. Those Jurio Rikshi don't deserve to be in the top division based on their record. They deserve to be Jurio one. So I don't think they're going to elevate them up to the top division unless absolutely necessary. Um, so I don't think they would be taken over like Takedu Fuji either, uh, sure. despite Takedu Fuji being from so much further down in Jurio than they were. Uh, so despite how Haku Oho was treated, I am going to be putting Takedu Fuji at Maegashira 16 West ahead of Endo here. He deserves to be two ranks ahead of Endo, which was our original rule uh, that we came up with when we were just figuring out how do you place Jurio Rikshi amongst all these Makauchi Rikshi. And honestly, the Bosque committee seems to, this Bosque committee seems to be a smidge nicer to Jurio Rikshi than the Ise, Isekahama Bosque committee was. Uh, and also, when I dove deeper into what happened with Haku Oho, like why did so many people get put ahead of him? Like Endo and Aoyama, he deserved to be five ranks ahead of them. I don't care that he's coming from Jurio 8. He deserved to be five ranks ahead of them. If Haku Oho had been placed ahead of any of those like six Makuuchi Rikshi that I had less listed, he would have forced an over demotion uh, for those Rikshi and any others that came behind him. Uh, which we know that the Bonsuke committee likes to avoid. So I think that's the big reason Haku Oho was so far down. Um, I, it's not the reason he ended up behind Bushozan. I think that's the Jurio Joy thing, but I think the reason he ended up behind all those extra Maegashira was because he would have been forcing over demotions. That sure. isn't the case here with Takedu Fuji. If Takedu Fuji goes ahead of Endo, Endo's still going to be under demoted. Uh, so I, I feel a bit better about putting Takedu Fuji here ahead of him. And there's a big part of me that really just wants Takedu Fuji in the top division. Dude <laughs> has been an absolute steamroller, and I see no reason why he won't be at the bottom of Maegashira either. Gotcha. Fair enough. So... That leaves me with just Endo to fill out the last remaining Makuuchi rank at Maegashira 17 East. We had Maegashira 17 West in the previous Basho, uh, but as Kotonowaka was promoted to Ozeki, that creates a new Sanyaku slot, which sucks up the last uh, Maegashira spot. So I have Endo filling that rank, dropping four ranks following his five and 10 record for Maga Shira 13. I will say there is an outside shot of Hoku Seho landing here following his two and 13 record from Maga Shira eight by the numbers. Hoku Seho deserves to be Jurio two, which is one rank below Endo. Um, I just maybe a difference in their position on the bonds case. Maybe they feel bad for Hoku Seho. They'll, uh, keep him in the top division. Uh, more than that, I think there is a better chance that Endo and Hoku Seho are both kept ahead of Takedu Fuji. I don't think Takedu Fuji is a slam dunk for the top division. I think it's more likely than not, but I do think there is a shot that Endo and Hoku Seho could both be taken because Hoku Seho deserves to be three ranks lower than Takedu Fuji. Maybe my reasoning for Haku Oho, uh, not being taken ahead of those other Makauchi guys back in Nagoya of last year was wrong. And maybe they just aren't big fans of taking people that deep in from Jurio unless they absolutely have to. Um, so there is an outside shot. Takedu Fuji is completely snubbed. And in that case, I think it would be Endo and Hoku Seho 
filling out these last couple of ranks. I, but I, I don't think that'll happen. Uh, and I would honestly be very upset if it did. So yeah, where, where that leaves us is we had five Rick. I predicting five Rickshie to be promoted up to the top division. That means I have to predict five Rickshie going down to Jurio. One of them, as I mentioned, is Hoku Seho. Uh, he's not a slam dunk, but the other four are 100% slam dunks. We have Tomo Kaze, five and 10 record for Magashira 15. Takeda Fuji, six and nine record for Magashira 16. Bushozan, four and 11 record from Magashira 16. And Aoyama with a big old goose egg from the bottom ranked uh, Magashira spot. So, Jake, going through all of that, what do you think I most likely got wrong on this? Um, I think that, uh, as usual, your, your logic makes plenty of sense to me. So I don't think this is one that's going to have any glaring screw ups or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I think that, um, I don't know, a six and nine from my guess year 16 feels like less of a slam dunk than you presented it for Takara Fuji going down to Jurio. I, I mean, I, I'm not saying I disagree with you. I'm just saying that's one that I'll keep an eye on. Okay. Um, I think another another uh, pinch point that might be an issue is Takiyasu. Um, he only wrestled four matches, um, or excuse me, five matches, uh, and lost three of them and then pulled out. I think that even if he's coming from the joy, that's not exactly like saying the same as a guy who went two and 13 while wrestling everyone, including the Yokozuna, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I think that, I think that potentially Takiyasu will... Maybe he won't get that joy bias that you gave him a little bit of an edge for. Um, but yeah, other than that, I, I think that, uh, yeah, I, I there's a lot of weird ones that I don't like them, but I get them. So yeah. I, I, I don't think that there's going to be anything that I think you're way off on. Um, so yeah, I, I'll pick those two. I'll, I'll say Takara Fuji has a, a, a shot to stay in the top division, and Takiyasu, I'd say, has a, maybe I'll call it 50 50 that you're off by at least a half a rank on him. Yeah, Taki, that's kind of where I would point to my most uncertainty. That was just, I got to the point of, I'm thinking too hard on this. Let's just go by the rank. Uh, yeah, like, sure. Go by how they deserve to be ranked. Because for that, I I would have to consider Takeyasu, Hokuto Fuji, Onosho, and Tamawashi, and how they would all interact together. So I'm thinking, okay, I think Takeyasu might get some joy bias, but the only person he would, like, he only deserves to be one rank less than Hokuto Fuji, and he deserves to be two ranks less than uh, Onosho and Tamawashi. So I don't feel good about putting him ahead of Hokuto Fuji because Hokuto Fuji should have that joy bias. So if I am going to put Takayasu ahead of anybody, it needs to be Onosho and Tamawashi, then I need to do the same with Hokuto Fuji. And so, there we're going again. Yeah, we're yeah. stuck in the loop. So <laughs> Exactly. So I, I think the most likely scenario, if Takayasu doesn't drop all the way down to Maegashira 9, I think how it would be placed is... Hokuto Fuji at Maegashira 7 West, Takayasu at Maegashira 8 East, and then Tamawashi at Maegashira 8 West and Onosho at Maegashira 9 uh, East, which sure. would put Onosho at the rank that he deserves to be ranked at. And so he would beat out uh, Nishiki Fuji for having that honor first. That would be that would be somewhat a tiny bit satisfying to Bonsuke dorks. So yes. let's root for it. <laughs> no, no, let's, let's root for me being right. Oh, okay, well, whatever. <laughs> That's what I'm rooting for. I'm yeah, rooting yeah, for yeah, me. I <laughs> All right. So this episode is going to be coming out on Monday, February 19th, the day that guests the Bonds K entries close. And we don't have to wait too long for us to hear the Bonds K recap or see how I everything ended up because the Bonds K will be released Sunday, February 26th for the Haru Basho that starts on March 10th. Uh, if you enjoy this podcast, you can leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or your favorite Real, real quick before you get into your thing, watch the SoCal Open this weekend. Uh, San Diego is putting on their second annual huge amateur sumo event. Uh, that's on Maximum Effort Studios. Uh, that's the name of the YouTube channel. Okay. Um, also, go check out the Mighty Eagle Team Tournament on the Mighty Eagle Sumo Club YouTube channel. Uh, I was just there last weekend. Uh, the tenth, um, and that is that is the only tournament in the country that is based entirely around the concept of fighting as a team. 
Both of those events are awesome. I just want to make sure that I mentioned the SoCal Open because uh, I don't think we're going to have another event before or another podcast before that event happens. So yeah. anybody listening to this, if you're into amateur sumo, look around for that. As always, sumo411.com for more events. Yes. Uh, you know where to find us. If you like us, rate us high. Uh, find us on YouTube. Leave a comment. All that fun stuff. All the good Subscribe. stuff. Subscribe. All the good stuff. Uh, until next time. Throw your salt high. Keep moving forward.